first step that you're going to want to do is take your frame. Now that we've got, I uh, bypassed the actual standoffs, but here's the setup. Two standoffs here, two standoffs here, two, and two. Now, if you want, one way to easily oops, get the cat out of the way, put it on the floor, and then take your three millimeter screw for your standoff here, hold the standoff in the inside with your fingers or pliers if you want, but not really required. Make sure that you have a proper size screw. Tighten that down. You can almost do this by hand. You only need three, three tools for the uh, hoverbot here. You need an Allen key, three millimeter Allen key. You need a, a flathead or a, a Phillips and a Leatherman tool. Those three tools will take apart the whole quadcopter and uh, then you can actually disassemble it completely. So there we go. We've got our body with the uh, standoffs now in the center so that we have arm clearance here. Next, like I showed you yesterday, we're going to take our, our arms. This is one arm here that we're going to use as an example. On the uh, blocks, you'll have a top of the block and a bottom of the block. On the top of the block, there is a slight ramp. Um, you'll notice it just by eye. If not, measure one side and then, and then check with the square on one corner. We're going to put this on loose these two. As you can see there's a little bit of, of play there now. Put them on loose, hold the nut with your Leatherman tool at the bottom or with a, a socket, one or the other. Loosen that one up. Now push this down. The nuts are clear of the ground or the surface below. Use a flat surface like a mirror or something. Then with your hand on top, tighten down that nut and hold with your Leatherman tool and that here at the bottom. There we go. And tighten that screw down now. After you tighten that down, recheck that your arm is square. It should sit flat. And there you go. Now with these on, you can actually, with pressure, you can actually straighten them out if you have to and then retighten as necessary. It should only take a few minutes to set this up because the plastic will set your square base. With the socket it might be a little bit easier, but Leatherman tool has a lot of uses, so there we go. And we're going to tighten this one down. The plastic can almost touch about one or two millimeter gap there. And there we go. We have our arm all set, ready to go into the quadcopter. Now the next step is going to involve putting your bracket on your quadcopter for the inside of the body. To do this, we're going to first measure that we have the right distance. Now before I was saying for 450 quad, 130 in between these two points. So we would have to move this down quite a bit, but we're going to set this up at the 20 centimeter arm length just to see how big it is. So this is right now 16 and a half or 16.4 centimeters. Your paws don't work there, cat. So we're going to actually attach our clamps here just by hand here. The height is the same as the block relatively. Once it's compressed it will be. We're going to insert this combination into our body here. Okay, we've got the HB8 arms on now. And uh, as I showed you by holding them down on a flat surface, you can set the black uh, plastic blocks, which will fix your, your format. I just put this uh, 11, well this is actually a 12 inch prop on to show you. These are the 20 uh, centimeter arms. So with a 12 inch prop, these uh, 650 kV motors will be sitting at that point. So I almost have an inch to clear before the frame itself. 13 inch props and then 14 inch props, the tip just 
intersects with the edge of your frame with 14 inch props. So 14 inch props, uh, probably a little bit too much, but 13s and 12s is what I really wanted it to be able to do. And uh, this is actually a 13 cut down to 12, but you get the idea. Now, when you're mounting motors, I thought I'd mention this just as a side note to building quadcopters. It's really important that you use the proper screws for the bottom of your motor. You don't want to use a screw that's too long, even by a half a millimeter or a millimeter. Because what could happen with some motors that I've had in the past is that that screw, when tightened completely down, will touch one of these coils inside your motor. Or get too close to it, maybe just press on it. Um, now they're insulated wires, so there should be no grounding. But sometimes, after repeated use, or if you've tightened and, and loosened that screw, you'll take a little of the enamel off the wire, and that will cause your motor to go then you'll start chasing back all your wires and digging apart all your inside of the quad, when it could be just that you have one longer screw than the others, or that your screws are just too long. So that's important. You want to check that first. The screws I'm, I'm going to include are 6 millimeter, and that is enough to cover the 1 16th of the motor mounts or the doubled carbon fiber mounts. Use a little blue Loctite if you're going to plan on not servicing your uh, quadcopter a lot. Um, because you'll want to make sure that those are, are tightly put down. So we're going to build up this quad as a large photo quad. Um, and when we do this, we're going to put on the, the legs, of course, so that we can clear our gimbal at the front. And we're going to be using the 650 kV uh, Emax multi-rotor pancake motors. Now, at this point, I wanted to show you one. I have one of these legs that's loose so that I can show you. Uh, here it's this one but it's going to be really hard to get it back in there. So this leg, when you place it on a flat surface, like a glass mirror or something, because this lower edge is your square edge, 90 degrees, and your screws are all the same length, you can do a quick check just by pressing it down like that. And if you're attaching your landing gear, you want to put them at the higher clearance area so that you can still square your arm against a flat mirror like this. And that goes, to, uh, goes for the whole frame, because each mount at the bottom, the aluminum mounts, have their screws uh, protruding at the same distance from the frame base. So when you put this on a flat surface, like a mirror, or a flat surface, uh, like a tabletop that you confirm that is flat, you'll get a really good adjustment. You can loosen your arms, uh, or your motor mounts, which would be better, and then tighten that down with it flat on your, uh, your known flat surface. Really simple setup that way then. You don't have to worry about too much else. If you have the gimbal on the bottom, then you're going to want to make sure that your, your blocks were set square before you final assemble. So now I'm going to put this back in. I'm going to have to loosen up these screws here. And a lot of the time, you would be able to touch or hold the, uh, the nut below if it's not too tight. It's an important uh, to have the brass washers on these areas here because brass acts as a lubricant, sort of, and you'll see a brass tone around your swinging arm areas. And on some of these uh, that I proof uh, before shipping them, that might uh, be a little bit evident, but it can wipe off easily. So that's not a big deal. And uh, I think it looks really nice because it actually shows that you're using your quad and traveling and doing things with it. Now let's push this out all the way. We're going to try to loosen up both just before the nylock releases. There we go. Okay, so our nuts are still on there. We're going to push apart these two plates, push in our arm, set it according to our distance already set on this side with our motor tips. We will set this side as well. These are on full extension at the front. The two arms here, full extension. We're going to pull this together and looking inside you want to equalize the two uh, ends of your tubes on the inside so that they're the equal length. Now you can flush mount them at the center or you can just put a piece of tape or a little mark so that each one is say a half a centimeter in. 
Um, now we're going to grab our Leatherman tool while we're holding holding our block in. We're going to tighten down our arm just a bit. Crap, punching over is a bit of a strain. So now we can still move our arm a little bit, just in micro amounts if we want. Now we're going to measure our distances. With our ruler or centimeter or whatever device you want to use. And right there I have 37 centimeters. So we'll double check this side, roughly setting it at 37 centimeters. Move this arm back a little bit. And you can use the black plastic as your, your uh, grip for moving the arms. And that's 37.5, so a little bit closer, maybe loosen this up a bit. And move the arm as a complete unit. Loosen this one up. There we go. I like to have it a little bit tight just so that it doesn't move once you've set your distance but you might want to loosen it off completely just in case. We have four millimeters to go back this way. There we go. And 37. So at 37, we're going to check that our screws on the bottom are laying flush on our flat surface. We're going to put our Leatherman tool underneath, grab our nut here, Tighten down this arm without putting too much downward pressure on it. Go to the back arm, easily, easily doing each one just a little bit each time. Say a, a full rotation or two when you're getting close to the final tightness of the actual clamp. You want to look inside here and see that your clamp's sides are equally gapped. My front one is a bit wider, so I will take off my back one a little bit and then tighten my front arm. Quite a bit more there. Now my arms are completely locked in and we can measure 40.5 centimeters, 37, 37, and our fronts are 45. So 45 front we know clears the 12 inch prop. So the back we can place our prop in the center there. The back is very similar. So our back distance is 41. Our front spacing on the front arms is 45. Now if we want to make this 45, we would check our props both front and back and then move our arms forward. Then we can equal out the width across the back to equal a, a true x-copter, a square x-copter, even though it doesn't look like one. We have 56. There's another 6 centimeters or, so, or 5 centimeters, 6 centimeters or so to e equal 600 if you really need a 600 size. Then your 14 inch props will clear all of your... Uh, body plates and everything so you'll have total lift. <clears throat> now next step is going to be putting on the landing gear if you're choosing that option. If not then you basically would flip over your quad. For your test flight I would recommend this just for getting set up and place your your foam discs on the bottom. They're adhesive one side so we have our foam discs, and then we will put, I guess, two at the tail, right there. Now this provides you another level surface, but you want to make sure that your screws are all equal with the screws on the inside, because like I said, they are equal lengths. So that will keep your quadcopter square and be able to be checked quite quickly. Um, so these are what I've been using for landing gear just these three pads doubled up 
and that balances quite well. You can actually do an IMU calibration with that. So there are our arms. They're on our quadcopter now. We're ready to put any other, uh, the other electronics on the top that we would want. But first off, I wanted to point out that this screw setup, the screw should be on top so that you can lift this top plate off and remove your braces. Now you will have to take your legs off, but like I said, your black blocks will rec uh, mark where your arms were set. So then you can just take your arms off with the wires still attached, get inside, work on your power control or your, uh, your flight controller, your video, all your setup inside, put the top plate back on, and you're off again. So that's why I built it this way, is so that you could actually access things inside very quickly. There's a lot of zip tie holes here that are extra holes so that you can actually zip tie things on uh, to the body if you need to, either to the top plate on the bottom or on top of the plate, like transmitters and that kind of thing. So that's why you see so many extra holes. As well, there's gimbal holes on all the HB8 uh, uh, G10 plates for the standard gimbal mount. So that's where we're going to go next. We're going to assemble the gimbal and place the gimbal on this with the landing gear, have it ready for our NASA, which is arriving this week probably, and we're going to put NASA with GPS in it. That's the end of part three. Any questions, please post them below. And any suggestions, always open to them. You know that I'll change things if I have to. But right now, I'm really happy with the format. And I think that this is a pretty uh, durable and easily repairable quadcopter because each component is not that expensive to replace. And you could have spares. And that means that there's nothing really proprietary about it. The actual aluminum mounts that I used to uh, template are available on eBay. So if you want, you can get them there as well. And uh, as well as tubing, 20 millimeter tubing is quite common. So you'll be able to do that. And I wanted to have it basically an open source multi-rotor that people could modify themselves. And uh, as a comparison, I'll show you the uh, 450 that I've been flying, the prototype. And there you go, there's not much of a big difference except for that extra three or four inches on the end. So, and you could have an X8, I guess. So, have a good day, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.